File 6. Chapter 57 Kingdoms can only be governed if rules are kept. Battles can only be won if rules are broken. But the adherence of all under heaven can only be won by letting alone. How do I know that it is so? By this. The more prohibitions there are, the more ritual avoidances, the poorer the people will be. The more sharp weapons there are, the more benighted will the whole land grow. The more cunning craftsmen there are, the more pernicious contrivances will be invented. The more laws are promulgated, the more thieves and bandits there will be. Therefore, a sage has said, so long as I do nothing, the people will of themselves be transformed. So long as I love quietude, the people will of themselves go straight. So long as I act only by inactivity, the people will of themselves become prosperous. So long as I have no wants, the people will of themselves return to the state of the uncarved block. Chapter 58 When the ruler looks depressed, the people will be happy and satisfied. When the ruler looks lively and self-assured, the people will be carping and discontented. It is upon bad fortune that good fortune leans, upon good fortune that bad fortune rests. But, though few know it, there is a bourne where there is nothing right nor wrong. In a realm where every straight is doubled by a crooked, and every good by an ill, surely mankind has gone long enough astray. Therefore the sage squares without cutting, shapes the corners without flopping, straightens without stretching, gives forth light without shining. Chapter 59 You cannot rule men, nor serve heaven, unless you have laid up a store. This laying up a store means quickly absorbing, and quickly absorbing means doubling one's garnered power. Double your garnered power, and it acquires a strength that nothing can overcome. If there is nothing it can overcome, it knows no bounds. And only what knows no bounds is huge enough to keep a whole kingdom in its grasp but only he who having the kingdom goes to the mother can keep it long. This is called the art of making the roots strike deep by sensing the trunk, of making life long by fixed staring. Chapter 60 Ruling a large kingdom is indeed like cooking small fish. They who by Tao ruled all that is under heaven did not let an evil spirit within them display its powers. Nay, it was not only that the evil spirit did not display its powers, neither was the sage's good spirit used to the hurt of other men. Nor was it only that his good spirit was not used to harm other men, the sage himself was thus saved from harm. And so, each being saved from harm, their powers could converge towards a common end. Chapter 61 A large kingdom must be like the low ground towards which all streams flow down. It must be a point towards which all things under heaven converge. Its part must be that of the female in its dealings with all things under heaven. The female by quiescence conquers the male, by quiescence gets underneath. If a large kingdom can in the same way succeed in getting underneath a small kingdom, then it will win the adherence of the small kingdom. And it is because small kingdoms are by nature in this way underneath large kingdoms that they will win the adherence of large kingdoms. The one must get underneath in order to do it. The other is underneath and therefore does it. What large countries really need is more inhabitants. And what small countries need is some place where their surplus inhabitants can go and get employment. Thus, each gets what it needs. That is why I say the large kingdom must get underneath. 
Chapter 62 Thou in the universe is like the southwest corner in the house. It is the treasure of a good man, the support of the bad. There is a traffic in speakers of fine words. People of grave demeanor are accepted as gifts. Even the bad let slip no opportunity to acquire them. Therefore, on the day of the emperor's enthronement, or at the installation of the three officers of state, rather than send a team of four horses, preceded by a distant jade, better were it, as can be done without moving from one seat, to send this towel. For what did the ancients say of this towel? How did they prize it? Did they not say of those that have it? Pursuing they shall catch, pursued they shall escape. They thought it, indeed, most precious of all things under heaven. Chapter 63 It acts without action, does without doing, finds flavour in what is flavourless, can make the small great and the few many, requites injuries with good deeds, deals with the heart while it is still easy, with the great while it is still small. In the governance of empire, everything difficult must be dealt with while it is still easy. Everything great must be dealt with while it is still small. Therefore, the sage never has to deal with the great, and so achieves greatness. But again, light ascent inspires little confidence, and many easies means many are hard. Therefore the sage knows too how to make the easy difficult, and by doing so avoid all difficulties. Chapter 64 What stays still is easy to hold. Before there has been a moment it is easy to lay plans. What is tender is easily torn. What is minute is easy to scatter. Deal with things in their state of not yet being. Put them in order before they have got into confusion. For the tree big as a man's embrace began as a tiny sprout. The tower nine stories high began with a heap of earth. The journey of a thousand leagues began with what was under the feet. He who acts, harms. He who grabs, lets slip. Therefore, the sage does not act, and so does not harm does not grab, and so does not let slip, whereas the people of the world, at their tasks, constantly spoil things when within an ace of completing them. Heed the end no less than the beginning, and your work will not be spoiled. Therefore, the sage wants only things that are unwanted, sets no store by products difficult to get, and so teaches things untaught turning all men back to the things they have left behind, that the ten thousand creatures may be restored to their self-so. This he does, but dare not act. Chapter 65